Um, well, again, thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, my name is Jose Romero. I am an adult services librarian here at West Orange Public Library. Um, I wanna thank everybody for participating in this excellent program. And I'll leave it up to Susan at this point. Okay. Um, so welcome to um, the session on hoarding, a preventative workshop, a seminar, I should say, not session. So it's, and it's presented in coordination with the West Orange Library and West Orange Senior Services. And um, this is about our, I think our fourth workshop together. And um, so thank you for asking ACAP to present this um, seminar. Um, just a little bit about ACAP. ACAP is a psychoanalytic institute and we're located in Livingston, New Jersey, very nearby, although at the moment everything is online. Um, we're a psychoanalytic institute on a mission. Um, we have a psychoanalytic institute. We have a master's degree leading to the LPC. Um, we have a master's degree in psychoanalysis and um, then of course the certificate program. What happened? The screen got full. It says um, you're, you're says reviewing Hetty's screen. Um, I didn't do I that. Know. I don't know who did that. Hetty's screen. Well, we can still see you though, but we don't know oh, who okay. Hetty is. I don't see everybody. I don't New know options. why this popped up. I think Should if I you exit full screen, I can't launch the meeting. I'm not the host. Jose. Yes. No. Can you? Um, I think you're the host. So can you fix this? But in the okay. meantime, I'll keep. I'll keep talking. Okay. Does she want to become co-host? No, I, no, 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 no. Yeah. I'm, we can I'm see someone's screen. It says to join a meeting, sign in. I, what am I going to sign in? I need the link. I don't know what no, it's not, I got to. You are, is that Lydia speaking? Yes. Lydia, you, you are in the meeting. We can see you and we can hear you. But I don't see everybody else. All right. Someone um, sharing their screen. I right. Know. So that's what, uh, no. So um, when you, Jose, started recording this, I see that it's recording. Um, possibly the, um, the Zoom thing came up. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you can X that out. No, X this out is, up here. Up this, here is, the... this is someone sharing their screen of what they're seeing. It says you are viewing Haiti's screen. So if you could please just stop sharing your screen. I think Jose, you must have yeah. you, you must have shared the screen, but it wasn't with me. I, I don't shared. have anything to share. Well, no, Haiti, I... Haiti is on the call. And um, she's the one sharing the yeah. screen. She's a person. I don't know what happened, but this is ridiculous. This shouldn't Jose? be happening. Yes. Jose. Yes. At the bottom where it says share screen. Yes. Just click on it so you don't share it. Okay. This was okay. How's that? Nothing. No, it's still there. Somehow you ended up sharing Hetty's screen. For, I, I don't know, but you can work on that and I'll just keep talking. Can Hetty hear us? Now my curse is, oh my. Oh my. Maybe if Hetty was to sign out and then sign I back in. The scheduling made easy. I'll be happy to do that. Thank okay. you. Okay, thanks. Thanks. How I can I figure out how. This? I just tried to switch it. Oh, this now, is now, um, Jose. Now yes. we're sharing your. Now your screen is being shared with us. Okay. Uh, okay. Good. We're okay. back. Oh, that's better. <laughs> we're back. Great. I don't know what happened. Thank you, everybody. I don't know what happened, but anyway. So, um, and I just wanted to finish up with uh, ACAP that people are welcome to take classes there. We have lots of workshops, seminars and um, lots and lots of stuff going on. And we're all online right now. So if you wanna go and explore our website, it's acapn, that's A-C-A-P-N-J.org, A-C-A-P, A-C-A-P-N-J.org. And you can find out lots and lots about us. 
Um, and now I would like to just ask everybody to um, mute yes, themselves yeah, basically yeah. too. Um, so that will, that will be helpful. And um, also, um, I think West Orange has, uh, is going to be sharing email addresses and names with um, ACAP and because we always like to have more names to put on our mailing list. And if anybody does not want to be on ACAP's email list, put your name in the chat. I will write the names down and be sure that you are not put on our mailing list. Otherwise, I think there's a possibility that your name will go on our email list. Um, so just uh, let me know who does not want to be on the email list. And now I would like to introduce you to Dr. Asenka Oxaloff, and she's going to be talking about hoarding, which is a fascinating topic. And uh, so I think we're all sort of a bit of a hoarder these days because we have so much stuff and so many papers and, uh, you know, it's hard to know what, how to deal with it all. But um, we can find out more information and understand this, this issue. Thank you. Thanks so Thank much. You. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, I see that Laura Van Dyke is uh, joining the meeting, so I wanted to say hello. Dr. Oskoloff, welcome. Hi. Hi. I just wanted to tell you um, also that, well, first of all, thank you for inviting me. And um, I have also sent you, I just sent you an email with a PDF version of the presentation because especially the last two pages, there's some resources that might be of use to people. So uh, you, Fabulous. You feel free to send it out to the participants um, or share it as you wish. So welcome everyone. Um, did you want to say something, Laura? I'm sorry. I want to, yes, I do. I want to properly welcome you and thank you for coming and um, kind of taking off one hat to another. So I do very much apologize. I'm delayed and I'm very thrilled that you're here and, and it's a great um, presentation for our community and neighboring communities. So I'll be happy to you know share any information um, that you've uh, emailed and um, and Susan, hello. We we spoke yesterday, and we did want to um, welcome everyone to this presentation. And ACAP is a wonderful organization in our neighboring town of Livingston, and we're thrilled to have you available to us and 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 to offer your presentations that you've done throughout the year. So we would like to add people to their mailing list. If you'd like to opt out of that, you could just. Um, put your name in the chat to me and, and I, we will, we will not do that, but otherwise we will look forward to adding you, sharing that with, with Susan um, Saunders at ACAP. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks. You. Thank you. Nice to see you again. <laughs> Thank you so much for inviting me. And this is an important topic. I actually, Ms. Saunders, I don't know if you were the one who said, you know, this is kind of a hoarding time. <laughs> And it's interesting because there is something uh, similar in terms of kind of the hoarding that has been taking place in terms of um, panic buying, um, but it's distinctive from the actual disorder. Um, nevertheless, it seems like a large portion of our population over this past year. Many new things have happened that we probably couldn't have predicted. And one of them is Damn, that, oh, that there's a general mimicking, I would say, of um, hoarding behaviors because of- Okay, 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 I'm gonna hold, hang on. Uh, if everyone could just mute themselves, um, thank you. So, sorry, Dr. Oskola. No problem. I also wanted to say, if you feel comfortable, I realize that, um, this is, is a sensitive topic um, and might be very personal to people. So if you don't feel comfortable sharing your screen, I mean, not sharing your screen, but uh, turning on your camera, that's fine. Um, but if you do and you just happen to have it off, I would welcome you to turn it on so that we have more of a community 
approach. Um, and uh, even if you don't have your camera on, feel free, please, because I will encourage participation to, um, to uh, add your comments or thoughts at any time. And at times I will prompt you um, in the chat um, okay. bar. If you don't know where that is, uh, if you go to the bottom of your screen, you'll see in the, toward the middle, you'll, uh, you'll see a chat um, function and you can uh, click on that to open up that window. And I'm gonna share my screen now because I have um, a PowerPoint that hopefully will help us. Uh, kind of review this complicated topic. Can everybody see that? Yeah. Yes? Yes. Okay, thank you. Let's start this. <clears throat> okay. Um, so I'm just gonna review really quickly. Well, first of all, I really wanted to get a sense of um, the audience here so I can tailor it, even though, you know, I have this presentation, but um, there's more than enough material to cover. So if you, if anybody wants to um, say why they're here, you don't have to reveal a lot of personal information. If it's for yourself and you wish to keep that to yourself, that's fine. If you have a particular um, area of interest or a, um, or if you're a public um, official or community member who's doing volunteer work, um, please feel free to introduce yourself on the <clears> chat. <throat> okay, or if anybody wants to say something um, in advance about a special issue that they're concerned with, please feel free. You can always unmute yourself at any time. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Anna Karen. Um, I am a social worker for the Livingston and Melbourne Health Department. And I'm particularly interested in this because um, I deal with hoarding cases or residents who have issues with clutter and whatnot on almost a weekly basis. I feel like the problem, I don't know if it's getting worse or it's being identified more, but it's, it's just it's overwhelming the amount of people that um, have this issue, especially seniors. So I'm just here to learn a little bit more so that I, you know, continue to develop my understanding of it and see what supports there are out there. Um, I also have personal experience with a family, a family member who is a hoarder. Um, and I, I know how hard that is as a, you know, as a loved one to have a loved one who has, who has that issue. Thanks, Anna Karen. Is, did I pronounce your name correctly, Anna Karen? Yes, yes, thank you. So you're wearing two hats, I, uh, one as a social worker uh, trying to address this issue with a growing number of clients and also uh, for personal reasons. So is anybody else either a social worker or doing this for um, personal, for something in their personal life? No. <laughs> I'm also working as a, uh, one of my hats I wear is as a social worker for the township of West Orange. Okay. Go okay. ahead, Lydia. Hi, um, my name is Lydia Rainbow and um, I'm not what you call a hoarder that's surrounded with stuff. I actually am an organized hoarder, partially. But I have a social worker who specializes in this. And right now we're not talking about hoarding because we're doing telemed. And uh, my problem, what I've observed is that wherever there's an empty space, it's full of stuff. Okay. And I, I have difficulty. I mean, there's things that I can't let go like I have pens and stick it, stickers and, you know, office supplies. I don't want to throw that away mm -hmm. or even give it away. But I can't help, and, and it's upsetting me. I'm very disorganized right now. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, thank you for sharing that. And we'll talk a little bit about, you brought up a number of issues. One is of tr really trying to understand where you're at with this and uh, how to view um, your collecting of items and the, the um, it sounds like you have a lot of items in your home and also about disorganization, also about your emotions um, connected to the, to that. So we'll talk about all of those things today. So uh, first we'll, we'll identify some symptoms. Thank you for sharing, Lydia. Mm. And, uh, right, could I add something to that? Sure. Uh, my um, major problem is I live in a very small apartment. Mm -hmm. I have nowhere to put my um, items, you know, toiletries and all that. I but I admit some, I, I'm training myself not to buy, if it's on sale, I keep buying more mm -hmm. because I don't want to lose the bargain. And I'm, Yeah, I'm, it's so tempting, I'm, right? To, uh... yeah, I've been stopping that, um, not all of it, but I don't know how to deal with it anymore. You're aware of it. Okay, well, we will talk about some strategies and you can share that also with... Um... The person who's working with you even if you're doing telehealth there's certain okay. things um okay thank you um so we're going to look at some of the symptoms um associated with hoarding behaviors and also look at um caretakers reactions and it might be your own personal reaction if you're taking care of yourself <laughs> and feel like you need to either, and you know, Lydia, that is a perfect example of that where you're actually taking in your own reaction to your um, behaviors, whether they be upsetting, rewarding, a mixture of both. Um, so we'll look at that and then also identify some support and intervention strategies. Um, first of all, just to give you the official, this is from uh, the diagnostic um, uh, manual um, that is used to diagnose psychiatric mental health conditions. Um, oops, I always do this. <laughs> um, so hoarding disorder was recently in the last 10 years was, um, um, I, identified as a distinct condition, distinct from OCD. It was uh, formerly uh, considered to be a form of obsessive compulsive disorder, uh, but there are some key differences that they found which have led um, the writers of the diagnostic manual to uh, create a category, a distinct category for hoarding disorder. Um, persistent difficulty in discarding or parting with possessions regardless of their actual value, a perceived need to save items and distress associated with discarding them, which results in the accumulation of possessions that clutter living areas and co compromise their intended use. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about that in action, but uh, I just want to go through some of the basic facts um, it's estimated, it's very interesting. I was, I wanted to get some hard numbers about um, how much of the population um, <clears throat> is dealing with uh, hoarding disorder and it's really unclear. Um, some say 1.5%, some say 5%. There was a recent JAMA article that said four, uh, but it goes up, the number goes up depending on age. So we'll talk about that. Um, but let's say as a rounded number for the general population, about 4%, um, it can interfere with an individual's ability to complete daily activities such as cooking, cleaning, or moving the around the house. If left, left untreated, it causes health safety, occupational problems, and have a significant public health and financial impact to communities. So Anna Karen, I'm sure you're seeing, you're concerned with some of those items, in, uh, including health, safety, occupational pro problems. Um, 
this has become a huge issue. Is there anybody here who is working in public housing? I'm sorry, what was the question? Is there anybody here who is working uh, in public housing? Okay, it's become a huge issue in public housing and housing in general because um, it very often prevents people from moving out and new tenants moving in. So, <coughs> excuse me, who hoards, and this is very in very broad strokes, um, certain characteristics, certain profile of um, who has a, is most at risk. Older adults, it's interesting, here it says late 60s, but more and more they're finding these behaviors increasing 55 plus, which would include me. So I mean, in that um, risk group. Um, and then there are additional um, factors that can play a role. Um, divorced or single, so single or divorced people tend to have a greater propensity toward um, hoarding, living alone, retired. Um, some cognitive impairments may be co-occurring. And that's something to look out for in terms of, um, especially if you're working with a loved one or a client in terms of just diagnosing um, a getting diagnoses of other possible contributors. Um, and that would also include comorbid psychiatric conditions. So is the person um, depressed? Is there OCD? And, and uh, one of the big differences between um, obsessive compulsive they have found now uh, and hoarding is that um, the majority of people suffering from OCD are aware of their condition and find it to be a problem. Whereas um, many people who ha are um, suffering from hoarding disorder are not aware of their, they're aware perhaps that their living condition has become untenable, but they're not necessarily aware that the behavior that has led to that is um, an issue. <clears throat> which as you can imagine can make it harder to um, harder to treat. Um, high intelligence uh, has also been, this is the rough profile of people who are more at risk and poor hygiene uh, in general. Now, this is also one of those, um, you know, is this, is it a true correlation or not? Because there can also be obviously hygiene issues due to the hoarding and the inability to um, be able to properly use the facilities in one's home. So um, one of the reasons I asked if anybody was, do, uh, was uh, working in the housing um, sector is because um, Boston area actually created a lot of states and townships and greater metropolitan areas are creating um, Hoarding task forces now. And so um, Boston did a major study because their problem had become so dire um, where they wanted to take a uh, data informed community approach uh, to the issue, uh, which more and more it looks like um, is what's needed in order to address the issue. So one person alone rarely can address um, all of the, not, not just the underlying issues, which would be more for a therapist or a <coughs> um, but the practical issues and also the alternatives that might decrease the behaviors. Um, so in the process of, of creating this task force, Boston um, collected a lot of data. It was 175. Um, subjects that they used who were in their public housing and were identified, um, were diagnosed. And, and there is an a, a official um, scale and, uh, indicator that is used for diagnosing um, hoarding disorder. And they collected the data and I just pulled a couple of the, the findings because I thought that they were quite interesting. Um, I believe I listed 
the um, the uh, PDF of this study is quite long, obviously, but um, uh, if I didn't, I can send it to you, Laura. Um, so they found for one thing that how long you live in a place, which makes sense. You're at a higher risk the longer that you, um, not the longer that you are, but it, if you're there for f more than five years, the risk increases. And I personally, on a, for, you know, in terms of my own autobiography, <laughs> autobiography, I can um, speak to this. I mean, I moved many times earlier in my career, um, and by the fifth or sixth move, I had very little in terms of moving because I simply didn't want to deal with moving my items anymore. So I really pared down. But it's very easy once you've lived in a place for a few years, especially if you have storage space, but even if you don't, to accumulate. So you'll see that 10 to 19, 28% of the participants um, who had hoarding disorder had lived in their places for 10 to 19 years and 22% for 20 plus years. So that's significant. And then also in terms of the household size, um, there was a definite decrease um, once you got over four people living in the household and probably for practical reasons as well, um, because there would be active pushback or prevention or before the problem became untenable. Um, but 78% of the people lived uh, alone of those participants. So what are some mo motivations um, for hoarding? And these are just some of them, but they're quite prevalent. Uh, sentimental value, if I discard this item, I discard a part of myself, a feeling that you would lose part of yourself if you let go of it or part of your personal history no. or maybe those of a loved one. Um, struggles with decision making, what if I need this, may need this someday? Yep. Did someone want to say something? Okay. I don't know if that was bad. I, I think somebody needs to um, mute themselves. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, I didn't know if somebody was agreeing or talking on the phone. So, um, Organizing, I don't know how to categorize this, so I'll place it in sight so I know it's there. How many people have a junk drawer? I'm just curious. You can just put in the chat yes or no, because I can't see all of you right now. No. Or if you do have one, just say yes. <laughs> yes, I have a duster. You have a what? No, okay, Noella does not. Did, did I you pronounce say, your name correctly, Noelia? Did you say a duster? Yes, you pronounced it correct. Thank you. Okay, I have one. What is that? I thought I you said that. a duster. No, I said a junk drawer. I'm sorry. Oh. Laura has a couple. Anybody want to share what you tend to put in that? Your those people who do. Which, what's what's to be found in the junk drawer? Do you, or don't you know? If you don't know, that would be interesting. <laughs> Susan says junky drawers. <laughs> I have drawers. I don't know if you'd call them junk drawers, but oh, I kind see. of like too junked up. Like I stick we stick receipts in there until it's like you can't close it anymore, and then yeah. gotta go through them all and. Yeah. Yeah, it's usually small items. I have nowhere, I don't know where to put, or I don't feel like, you know, designating a spot for them. So just throw it all in one spot. Exactly. And that is exactly because I actually did an inventory of, I have two junk drawers, one on top of each other. And one is for things that are kind of in my mind, I thought they were at least office related. But since then, it's, um, I've had all kinds of strange things show up there, including um, things that I wanted to send to my mother that I never sent off, um, 
So I guess that's kind of office related in the sense that it's male to be mailed. Um, in the other one, I have a wide array of items that don't match at all. So um, I think I had room deodorizer, twine for the garden, and you know a number of other things that did not fit in any category. And, and I was looking at them and I was thinking, why do I have this? Um, Patrice says office things, post-it pens. That's a huge, I think office items are huge as something that gets thrown into a drawer. But the reason I bring that up is because it really shows you how easily the inability to organize is based on not being quite sure how to categorize things or how to store something. Um, batteries, yes, I think I'm one of those people. I've had batteries in my junk drawers and not known whether they were working batteries or old ones. So that can make it even more time consuming to clean out. Um, but you'll find this very often. It's a good principle. Anna Karen, I don't know if you've noticed this in working with your clients, but um, very often people need help learning how to organize. And there are items that won't clearly fit into um, one or the other category, in which case, what do you do? Anybody have an idea? You're working with somebody or you're trying to help a friend and they have an item where they don't know where to put it. Lydia. Um, like I said before, I have a social life is important. Mm -hmm. so when we started to meet with each other, the first thing she looked around my apartment and said, I want you to give away some pens because I had a ton of pens. So I did that. And then, you know, she would say, start with a little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. I... I did that, but the pro and I did get rid of things. But like I said, whenever there's an empty spot, I, I look around and I see stuff. And I don't know how to, how to get rid of this attachment. And I don't have the room. Like I said, there are things I need like paper towels, canned goods, because I can't reach the cabinet. So I keep them out and the kitchen is cluttered with cans, but organized. I, I have paperwork, but they're in categories and I keep a file and I have a few of those. So whenever I have a bill or something, I put it in that file. Now, sometimes I can't find the file with all the organization, but it's like I'm a semi I'm semi-organized. It just the stuff is what's holding me hostage. Mm. Stuff is holding me hostage. That's a very good way of um, putting it. And unfortunately, I mean, we'll talk about this later in terms of supports. But I would say that your social worker is doing the right thing in terms of starting small unless there's a particular Hello. area that is going to really interrupt your life. So um, no. If everyone would please thank mute you, themselves. What? I, uh, I thought you said I'm high. <laughs> oh, they should be able to mute. Uh -oh. I think really? Actually, wait a minute. I, I, since I'm the host, let me just. Um, what grade? Oh, see, I can't reach any of my. Um, oh God. Laura, are you a, are you a host? Bye. There, I, Laura, are you a host? You're not. Okay. Actually, so I was talking. I, I was muted. No, I'm not. All right. Okay, it sounds okay now, actually. Okay. All right, um, anyway, uh, let's, we'll, we will talk about some supports, but um, let's, I just wanna go through some of these motivations. Uh, responsibility, 
this object has a use, I need to keep it so it doesn't get wasted. Control, if I throw or give this item away, I won't know what happens to it. I'll, I'll be, it'll be in the hands of others. So that feeling that you have to um, have ownership of that particular article. Fear of forgetting, if I get rid of this, I may forget its content or the way it looked, it'll be gone forever. Um, letting go of things. If I let go of this, I let go of that specific part of my life, however insignificant it may be. Now, one thing, the, those are some of the underlying surface thoughts. They might be unconscious, but they're still pretty close to the surface of our consciousness. Um, Whereas there's so much more going on underneath. So if you look, if you think of um, hoarding disorder as an iceberg, what we see above the water is first of all, the result, which is the clutter. And we see the behaviors, saving and acquiring. But underneath it, all of this is family history, is there a history of hoarding in the family? Um, they're thinking more and more that there is some genetic basis or learned uh, behavior, obviously. Um, neurobiology. Um, and again, now, they're, now the science, uh, you know, um, neuroscience has gotten much more um, sophisticated in terms of what they're finding out about the brain. They are finding that different areas of the brain are activated uh, distinct from OCD, if they if if the person has hoarding disorder and doesn't have OCD, that it actually is a different activation of neurons in the brain. So, um, which would support that diagnosis as being separate. Physical health is the person able to care for their surroundings, um, to move around safely, and this can often be one of those um, vicious circles. Um, Executive functioning, this is huge. And especially with um, the older we get, unfortunately, um, many people have a decrease in their executive functioning. What is executive functioning? It's about decision-making. It's about planning. It's about being able to foresee the future, being able to see the for, um, foresee the consequences of one's actions. Um, there is, tends to be a certain slowing down of executive functioning with age. And then trauma, loss, and memory. And these will require the most amount of time to tend to because usually they're the most deeply hint, uh, hidden um, in terms of either the person being able to share or even realize uh, on a conscious level how trauma loss and um, memory function play a role. Um, Dorothy asked, wonder if this disorder affects more women or men? It's interesting because they found that more women than men, especially with compulsive shopping or a compulsive acquisition of items, but women are also, the good news about that is that women are also more likely to seek help than men. Um, so it's very hard to address the issue if the person is unwilling to seek help or to acknowledge that help is needed. Um, so hoarding among older adults, a study by researchers at Johns Hopkins uh, revealed that about 4%, so this was from Johns Hopkins, uh, of the population as a whole shows hoarding behavior, but that percentage goes up to 6.2 in people over 55 and gets increasingly higher with age. Um, it comes with a unique set of potential perils. Not only can hoarding cause physical danger, increasing the risk of falls in a home crammed with stuff and creating hazardous or unsanitary conditions, it can also indicate the presence of Alzheimer's, dementia, or mental illness. Now, it doesn't have to, and we shouldn't also jump to conclusions um, that someone is suffering um, other either mm -hmm. mental health or physical condition decline um, because of these behaviors. 
but it should be taken into account as a possibility. So I wanted my husband to, um, I don't know how to do animation <laughs> on PowerPoint yet, I always forget. I wanted him to um, not show the reactions, but maybe since you can see some of the reactions that I put down here um, of caretakers or even of oneself as one's grappling with issues, um, would anyone like to share either turn on their mic or uh, feel free to put in the chat what some of your experiences have been reacting to hoarding on an emotional level or a behavioral level? You must have some feelings about it. I could say it. Yes, Lydia. Seemed to be the only one talking. <laughs> um, it, you know, I rather, when I get up in the morning, I see all the stuff. I don't want to deal with it, so I avoid it. Mm. But I relate to the shame. I don't want others to know, <laughs> to know that I have a mess here. But, um, it bothers me. There's no doubt about sure. it. It bothers me. And I wish I had a, a pantry closet where I could put stuff away. I, I haven't got that. And yeah. that's why things are on the floor. But I certainly do not look like that couple you showed in the previous screen. Yeah. I'm not surrounded with stuff where I can't walk at all. Right. I right. put a lot of stuff in a neat organized, but I'm using up space. Right. And uh, the whole thing with me, it's just, anyway, I, I can't let go. I don't want to throw away stuff that is good. I gave away a ton of clothes. Um, That's great. I did some of it. Yes. But... Well, you know, what is the, can I just ask you, what do you feel takes up the most space that impairs your functioning in your place? Wait, I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. What type of items take up the most space for you? Or where? Either uh, one can answer. Well, I, I'll tell you, um, I have um, a vacuum that's up, that stands up. It's a Dyson. Mm -hmm. And I don't have where to put it on the wall. So the bathroom door is partial. It's not enough room with the wall. Then I have a suitcase full of stuff. And it's standing by my, uh, like a closet, uh, like a piece of furniture. And I have stuff all over the counter. It, it's just so much stuff that I don't know where to begin. I can't, I can't put away stuff. And that's part of the problem is the limited space, which I stated earlier. Yes, I, and it can totally be overwhelming in terms of where to start. And I, I think that um, at, at the end of the presentation, I will also give you some resources in terms of um, and Lori, you might know in your area, since I'm not from, I'm from um, central Jersey of resources, but um, there, I, I have some lists, websites with good lists of, pe of uh, professional organizers. I can't afford it. Okay. I already looked into that. I can't afford it. Mm -hmm. And what are they gonna help me? I'm gonna say, get rid of this, get rid of that. I mean, I can't pay someone per hour. I live in affordable housing. There's no way. Mm -hmm. I, I, somewhat I may need to reopen with my physical therapist. Um, not my physical, my social worker. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I know I'm aware of what's going on. Mm -hmm. It's so, the, what the problem is to do something about it. 
and I don't seem to want to deal with it. But I'm, I don't feel, yes, it bothers me, but I'm not in a deep depression over this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because some of the stuff is organized. Mm -hmm. I take pictures of what I put in certain, um, you know, box or I take a picture of the contents. So I don't, so I remember, I just look at the picture and see that's there and that's here. So I, I think of all kinds of things to minimize the pain. Yes. You know, I, that's why I said I'm kind of an organized hoarder. I have too much stuff and I don't like, I don't want to let go. And I, I identify with a lot of these things that's, that's stated in this particular, um, you know, page. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you're very self-aware as you're very aware. You've really been able to um, articulate a lot of the feelings, the complex feelings, and also just the practical side of it. So um, I don't know if some of these on the practical end of it to give you a start, um, whether some of these resources are uh, free of charge but if you do have a social worker who's working with you, hopefully they'll be able to get come into the house. Um, yeah. And that will help you more, I believe. But Laura, I didn't, I don't want to put you on the spot, but if there are organized uh, professional organizers or social workers who specialize in, in those kind of things, do you know of any in your yeah. area? I she don't offhand, but I, I wouldn't mind um, assisting. So I'd be happy to look into that further and um and and strategize a bit yeah Lydia yeah yeah I, I have a list of resources um and there are a number of social workers one in particular that I've been in touch with and I have to agree with you Lydia it's very expensive they charge per the hour I know um it's like I think the rate that I got from one person was like 150 dollars for an hour wow um, that was just to start I'm sorry one second please with so um, we're going to run out of time and I don't, I really want to go into an important aspect of this in terms of just the uh, emotional and uh, a response and um, approaching the issue. So um, I would say that um, I'm one of the, one of the uh, links that I'm giving you is from the Princeton Senior Center. Um, they were listed as kind of uh, a, a task force type organization. It seems that one of their um, employees is uh, specializes in hoarding um, issues. And so they have a vast number of different um, resources on their website. And I, I'll give you that link. But um, I also want to say it's not unfortunately a one person issue, right? So uh, especially when you're dealing with the cost of it, um, often there are aspects, for instance, when Lydia, when you said, um, I feel very attached to these items and I feel, so there, that is a more of an emotional end of it that, um, you can only address through some type of therapeutic relationship. Now, if it's not with a therapist or a social worker in terms of talking about your feelings of attachment and where that's coming from and where, how that's triggered, then you, you could get the most expensive organizer in the world. And after a couple of weeks, it, the same thing will happen because there is an impulse uh, behind it and there's emotion behind it. So um, let's remember that, that there's not, but I should say before I forget that there are free resources in terms of um, there are online um, workshops and there are also support groups. Um, I believe the support groups, the one that I found is through um, the Mental Health Association of New Jersey. Um, it's a particular chapter, it's in Atlantic City, but it doesn't really matter because the county I mean, now they're also serving the yeah. online community. So, um, so 
yeah putting those different factors okay supports together might be helpful um Estrella, if you could mute your computer that would be helpful okay so how can i help and i really want to get so first of all diagnosis obviously rule out any coexisting conditions um clean out or not well first of all i think for the general public or for all of you no matter what your role is um you it really is a topic to be discussed this is not like the movies or the show you know uh the hoarding you know what, what's that called hoarders that show an a and e right yes they show you like they send in a crew but most of those people if you follow up it's like those very you know weight loss programs um they oh thank you um anna karen for sharing that website uh with a directory um so and also if you go in and just want to clean things up i mean how how would you feel if somebody went into your house and said here i'm just getting rid of all this stuff i wouldn't like it no so that's part of the issue and before one can say okay let's go out and clean all this up for some high price that nobody can afford, that has to be addressed. And also, what are the things worth keeping? So a series of questions have to be asked. What is the purpose of this item? How does it make you feel? Well, I mean, this is once you're getting into the nitty gritty of it. Um, do you have more than one of these? Do you need more than one of these? Probably not. <laughs> right. So there's a lot of duplication. Uh, one woman that I worked with had, um, she asked me to buy her um, Depends, you know, and I thought, okay, everybody, you know, most, many women at, or older adults need Depends. And I dropped it off at her, um, uh, she was at the time, she was in the hospital and she was coming home. And when I dropped it off, there must have been, you know, 30 boxes. So will she need that many depends uh, for, um, you know, the near future? Probably not, but there's something more going on there. But at least that awareness of the duplication can be important. Um, training and support for sorting and discarding. How do we create categories? And again, this has to do with really listening and interviewing people. So the number one thing I would say is that active listening and motivational interviewing is the most important thing you can do for a client, a loved one. And if, if you um, are someone who is struggling with the issue to find someone who um, will be the active listener and motivational interviewer for you. And, then ongoing therapeutic support. And again, this can be online supports. There are also workshops that are offered and they're at a fairly low cost. So I'll tell you about those. Um, you could talk it. about also the ACAP. We have a um, um, low fee clinic in Livingston at ACAP that people can get support. Yes. Thank Very you. low fee. If you want to you put it out. It, um, website, did you put it on there already? Yeah, already? you no. told us the website. Um, ACOPNJ.org. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Susan. Thank you very much. much. I'll write it up here, too, in case but anybody could I make wants to uh, see another it. comment could I make quick? I've taken a picture of the mess, and then I look at myself, and then I start to work what I see in that picture. So that is another method that could be helpful. Thank you, yes. You're essentially doing that work with yourself and you're, you shows that you have a lot of insight and strength and willing motivation. Um, and and um, then the next step, I mean, we can never do everything alone. So, um, but I would say, especially 
for Anna Karen or other um, social workers, for instance, who are working with clients, um, it's very important, first of all, that we achieve a common language um, about some of these issues. So using negative terms, and I'm sure you don't do it, but it is so interesting that even hoarding has such a um, negative connotation already, right? Versus collecting. Now, obviously they're distinct in, in a, a clinical sense, but nevertheless, in regular everyday uh, language, we feel that there's a negative connotation to hoarding. Um, so positive or neutral, um, you know, saying items or your belongings, they are, whether you consider them junk or not, they are somebody's belongings, right? So to avoid negative terms and come at it with an open-ended um, framework. So you will find out much more about if it's a yes, no question, very often you're looking for the right answer. If it's an open-ended question, what is your relationship to this item? What does this mean to you? I see that you have a lot of, um, well, I knew someone who had a lot, a lot, a lot of paperwork, a lot of correspondence, couldn't sit on any, uh, any of the furniture in their house. Well, after using open-ended questions, it became very clear that a lot of those papers were from organizations that were soliciting donations and that this person felt very strongly about wanting to give back to the community. And so because they get on these mailing lists, A, they didn't know how to stop it. B, they didn't know how to categorize it or how to kind of maybe narrow their interests. Um, but the underlying impulse was to feel needed, right? And to have some sense of, after a great deal of loss, which many older adults experienced, was to feel needed and to have a sense of agency. So those core emotions and feelings need to, in some ways, be expressed. And interestingly, once they're expressed verbally or articulated through language, some of those impulses and the feeling that someone is listening and reflecting. So yes, I can understand that this would be very important or that this sounds like an amazing project. Um, would you, you know, what would you like to focus on? Um, that those, some of those symptoms um, start to go away and that the person actually figures out how to address their own issues, because as this uh, quote says, um, people are better persuaded by the reasons they themselves discovered than those that came into the minds of others. And that's pretty much true for everything, right? Um, so I, I know we're out of time. Um, I won't be able to, to uh, go over this case study, unfortunately. And I also wanted to give you um, and hopefully you'll get this and your, um, you know, through the, uh, your email if uh, Laura has the. Yes, you sent that to me in your uh, PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. Yes, but I'm happy to share. Well, these should be in there. I hope they're hyperlinks, but if they're not, you can just um, copy and paste them into your browser. Um, these, I wanted to. So this is a Mental Health Association of um, Atlantic City does have an active support group for, from what I know. Um, but you can go to that link and then you can also um, contact them if you wish to join. Um, Buried in Treasures. So this is a workshop that has been developed by two um, researchers. Um, it's nationally, um, they're, there are people who've been trained all over um, the country. And the good news is that there's someone at uh, quite near to you, I believe. Um, she's part of the Mental Health Association of New Jersey. Her name's uh, Laverne Williams. Susan, Laverne's gonna be talking at um, ACAP, I believe, but not about hoarding, but she is an expert. She's trained in the Buried in Treasures workshops. Oh, how interesting. Yeah. 
So she last year offered a, um, I believe it was like a six or eight week course uh, workshop um, for people um, struggling or ha who had loved ones struggling with hoarding. Um, I did not see one for this year, but you may want to, um, I had her email. Laura, I will send you her email because I don't have it offhand. I thought I included it in here, um, but you could reach out to her directly. Um, Great. To see. Um, I know other people have to go. So I, and then the last are some local, um, oh, here's, oh no, I don't have it, I'm sorry. Okay, um, senior, Princeton Senior Housing has a list of, also movers who are, uh, there, there's a national organization that helps with uh, um, moving seniors. So the National Association of Senior Move Managers, and then, yeah, um, there are also a whole array of resources from the Senior Center. I'm sorry we ran over. I feel like we didn't have time to actually- Excuse me, what is the phone number? Because it's cut off, 973-51. Oh, I'm sorry. Five seven on the, one. on the pews. Five seven one. No, five. It's five seven one. Mm -hmm. Four one zero zero. That I go. Laura, do we have a few minutes just to for? Yeah, anybody? I think that's it. Yeah, and if people have to 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 drop off, they can. But but please. Okay. Thank you so much. I just want to thank everybody for attending. I have to go, but um. Thank you very much. Thank you, for Susan. Having and us and to Dr. Oxaloff. Thank you. I'm okay. trying to I'm trying to unshare this. <laughs> Let me how see. How do we how get out of this? Hold on. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are you gonna take us out of this? So Lydia, um, if you need to go, you can um you can click leave for yourself. It's on the oh. bottom right. It does, it, it does, it says you are viewing uh, Senka's uh, screen. I right. want to get, how do I get out of it? If you move your mouse, there should be a menu that pops up on the bottom. And on the bottom right, it should have the, the word lead in red. Well, it's at the left, not the right. Okay. Hey, Jose, would you be able to help Lydia to um, disconnect? No, I got it. I see leave meeting. Oh, okay. See, I have I have Apple. Everything the exit out is on the left side, not the right. Microsoft is on the right. So okay, I, so I got take it. another minute here, then, Doctor Askeloff, if you wanted to. Any if anyone has any questions, anyone? Well, I said everything uh, that concerns me. Oh, I had one question, Doctor Askeloff. And it was the question about um, if you're familiar with that um, concept in Scandinavia about Scandinavian death cleaning, which is what people do as they grow older, and it's just a way of living. Do you want to explain that? I've heard of it, but I like, please explain it to me. Yeah, I, I, I only heard of it from someone else, but in Scandinavia, they have what they call the gentle art of death cleaning. And the idea is that as you grow older, you start to part with items that you've had and you give them to loved ones or you give them off to charity and you just kind of make peace that you don't want someone else having to come into your home after you've passed away and try to figure out how to sort through your things. So you enjoy giving away things while you're alive to people who need them or who want them and you can feel good about that. And at the same time, you're cleaning um, up and getting your affairs in order. Yeah, that's beautiful. I think what's lovely about that too is that it really directly uh, addresses the control issue, which is one of the impulses behind uh, collecting in the first place, mm. right? And this way you really have control and are giving, and, and it's an act of altruism and you're able to give um, things in a meaningful way. Even if it's not an individual, you can give to an organization that means something to you or a particular, you know, very often clothing drives will be for a particular fundraiser. So yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you. 
it's and I, it doesn't necessarily fall into hoarding dr askeloff but it is it is hard to part with the things that get passed down through generations like diaries and scrapbooks that held sentimental value to my, my mother who's no longer here and so those get passed down that don't necessarily have deep meaning the journal certainly more than the, say the scrapbook of high school productions of something but it's yes. I find I find that challenging to let those things go and they collect so yes. for me that's a it's you know and like Dorothy's saying it is a gift when you can tend to your own business and make plans for those things and and either discard them yourself or again the journal's kind of different but um I, it, yeah. for me it's hard there there's I have a few boxes of those kinds of belongings that need a destination and it's a I'm a little bit locked in with that it's interesting because I've had I've been contemplating the same issue because my mother is uh quite elderly and has been failing lately and she has many um uh photo albums that date back to her grandparents I don't know who those people mm. are anymore but there's this feeling you can't throw away some this slice of time right that is somehow connected to you and um I definitely have um started to do some of the digital work on that where I'm I'm you know now with technology and you know you really can digitize a lot of things and then you know save that one piece that you feel maybe is irreplaceable in terms of a let's say a journal like you know that you really think okay this has a direct attachment to me and it, i can you know one question is what is the narrative that you're creating around this object right and and it's strange because some of these objects we no longer know what the narrative is but we <laughs> of course have created something to ourselves so the question would be, you know, to investigate whether that narrative exists and, um, and try to isolate the things that really only make sense within that narrative. Not, you know, if, if your mother was a great actress, let's say, you know, and you felt like you needed one of those productions to remember her by, you know, then that would have a different maybe implication for you. But if it's just that you feel, you know, for the, I need to keep everything of this person's, of course, that's not going to get the person back, right? I mean, it is not who they are. So um, really we can take a, you know, a twofold approach, like take, take, make use of modern technology and also investigate the narratives that we have around objects and whether they're actually meaningful ones for us. So I don't know if that helps at all, but. No, it does, it does. right. Because it's like if the playbill is just another Saturday night of something she's done, which they really are, that is easier to let go than, than she was in the drum and bugle corps. And that history is harder to let go, but it's still a lot and it still need, yeah. needs to go somewhere. Um, so one thing I've had, um, one of my sons is pretty, uh, he's pretty artistic with collages and I've had him take different items and put them to, you know, this only works more for like paper items, <laughs> but um, really, you know, either take photographs of them and be able to put them together in one page of a collage or, um, or um, simply take a photograph, like he'll lay things out and then he'll, he'll be able to take a photograph of that. And that can be also actually more meaningful in the sense that you can see it kind of as a, as a entire group. But, um, so you might want to solicit some of your yes. artistically <laughs> minded friends. <laughs> Great. Right. And do you just want to mention that case study that if someone wanted to Google it, just the, um, the YouTube clip yeah, there, if someone wanted to see. Google it. Well, it's a pretty long, hold on one second. I have to see how I uh, get to the oh. actual URL for it. I'm not sure how to do that. Oh, 
Um, you could also, if I think you were going to email me um, the phone the, number. Uh, you, yeah, the, yeah. Um, if you want to send that link, I can share that too, because it sounded like that might be another just good thing for people to look at. Yeah, it's interesting because he really lays out also um, some of the major points to review about um, hoarding disorder. And then embedded within that is a particular woman's case. And it really illustrates how it takes many different, first of all, it takes time, which in most right. cases, which can be difficult because we feel like we want problem solved now, you know, and, um, but um, also that it takes really a different, a team of people. So. Great. Okay. Well, well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And I hope, Jose, I hope you get your, um, what, what, what did you want? A station wagon? <laughs> Yeah, station wagon. Let's see if it happens. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. Great. Thanks, everyone. Really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. This was right. Thank Appreciate you. it. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you so much. Bye-bye.